Hey everybody, welcome back to Champ and Sons and our College Baseball 21 series following the Texas Longhorns, or as they're listed here, Austin Longhorns, because I completely messed up in the naming of the team. So be it, it happens, I ain't changing it at this stage of the game. And we have got a big time rivalry matchup against the hated, useless Oklahoma Sooners. But we are playing in Austin today, so this will give us some of that home field advantage that we are going to be needing. Now, our batting average has stepped up a notch, but in this series it has been kind of rough as we have only we did win the first two games of this three-game set, but only by one run apiece. And hitting has been kind of hard to come by. Um, we're not getting a whole lot of hits, but I will say the time we are making connection with the ball generally... Those balls are going hard out of the park. Um, so that that is one positive. But, you know, in the NBA, you can rely on a three-pointer. In baseball, you cannot always rely on home runs. Well, I say that about the NBA, but then again, look at teams like Houston, like they try to do. Mm. Oh, well, maybe a bad point. Oh, well, back to the game, everybody. We are getting this one started off here in the top of the first. Gil Lacero is going to be our starting pitcher. He's got one of the better ERAs for the team um, and one of the better win-loss percentages at four wins to one loss on the season so far. So we've got a pretty good start. We are first in our division at this stage, 24-12 and 12 on the season. Um, like I said before, you got to remember that you know, we don't have a standard college season. We can't change the season length. So this is a 162-game college season that we have going on right now. And to the opening batter, the count is 1-2, and two, and that one's going to be an inside strike. But for some reason, he's not out. What the hell? I thought it was 1-2. and two. Hmm. Maybe I misread that one. So be it. Very next pitch, one and two. Once again, Gonzalez is going to swing and miss on that one. He's going to go down for the first strike of the game. And now coming up to it, we will have the second batter at the plate. He's got a little bit of speed working for him, so we do have to keep that in mind kind of going forward. And that first pitch is going to be slightly outside on the fastball, coming in at 92 miles an hour. Now, Lucero doesn't have the most speed in the world, but he's got a lot of good placement, which has really helped out. And that one's going to be hit right onto Navoa at her second base spot. And that's going to be grounded out as he throws it over to Baker there at first. So two outs will be here in the top of the first inning. And let's take a look at the Sooner batting averages. Now, they got multiple guys at 200 or lower, and that's kind of contributed to them having one of the worst seasons, um, being near the bottom of the division at this point. And that's just kind of the effect hitting can have. If you cannot string them together, you're just not going to be able to put runs on the board. It's that simple. So here comes a third batter to the plate, and that first pitch is going to be a slider down and away for a strike here. 0-1 is the count. And Lucero delivers the second one. That's going to be a swing and miss on the up-high fastball. 0-2 is where we stand at this point. Slider, fastball, you don't know what's coming. Fastball, off-speed. And we're going to throw that off-speed one. He's going to hit it, but Navoa is going to chase it down in shallow right. And that will be the third out of the inning on this start of the ball game. All right. That's not a bad way to start, I will say that. Three up, three down for the Longhorn defense. Now, here comes the OU pitcher, Philip U. Seven starts, a 2-4 and four record with a 3.12 ERA. Not very good. Um, so 14 walks for 43 strikeouts. You know, that's basically at a one for three ratio. Uh, one strikeout for three walks. So, yeah, it, he's not going to be the toughest challenge we face all season up to this point. I'll say that just to be nice. Now, Marlon Sweet is our DH. He will be the first batter to face you in this ballgame for the Longhorn offense. As he lets that first one go by an outside fastball, 0-1 is the count. In the second pitch, Sweet's going to... Push out to the right field, and that one will drop in front of the right fielder. And he will get on first. Second pitch of the ball game. That one's driven to the outfield, and the Longhorns have already got a hit on the board. Now, that one was a good shot, taking it the other way. And that's something that's been a little bit harder for us, the directional type hitting, um, taking the outside pitches basically to the opposite field. A lot of times we come around on them a little too early, and they end up being ground out. So... 
Mario Vega is one of the top hitters on our team with a 325 batting average and six home runs on the season so far. So having him come up second right behind Sweet is a pretty positive thing as he gets a hold of that one, and that's going out to the left field. And it is going to drop shy of the warning track, but he did get a pretty good hold of it. And that's something I found with the show 21 is, man, when you're playing on these harder difficulties, you can get a hold of the ball, but half the time they or more than half the time, they go right at someone, and that's kind of what happened there. Now, looking at our batting average, we only have Marcos Lopez, who's actually in for the DH. Marlon Sweet is in at second, um, taking over for Noboa. Uh, but Lopez is the only one that we do have hitting below 200 right now, so that's kind of led our team to be in this number one spot. Now, Drew Crane coming in as our left fielder is one of our top hitters, but not on that pitch. He had good timing, but... A Pretty good placement on that high fastball up in the zone. Did result in the pop-out. Uh, but Drew Crane and then who you're about to see come up next, Harvey Hayes. These guys have been a pretty good little duo. Um, you know, one after the other. Then Padilla should be up fifth. So those are three powerful at-bats back to back to back that come up. And you can't really ask for more out of your lineup at that point. Now, Harvey Hayes is batting a 254 average with only one home run so far, um, but multiple RBIs. So Sweet will take his lead from first. The pitch comes into Harvey Hayes, and that's going to be a pitch out, checking to see if we're going to steal. And I'll say this, the speed ratio um, on these guys, you know, Sweet has a 71 speed, but, man, that's still the way they get these jumps on them. If their stealing ratio isn't all that much higher, like his is only a 55, you really don't want to go all that much. Odds of you actually making it are pretty dang low, I'll say that. But back to Hayes Hyde on the off-speed pitch, and then as that pitch will be outside on the off-speed pitch, and that brings up a two-and-two two count with two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Hayes gets set at the plate, and you throws it over to first for the pickoff, but Sweet is back in time easily, and so you can't really ask for more. All right, now here comes you getting set for the two and two delivery to Hayes. Comes it in, that's high and inside, but Hayes will foul that one off. A um, little bit behind on it, didn't expect it to be up, and it was slightly out of the zone, but still, I love the high fastball, so I got a cut at it. Two and two delivery once again. Hayes this time drives it to the opposite field, and that's going to be caught by the sooner left fielder. So that will be the third out of the inning. And we did at least get one hit, but the score. The game remains scoreless here after one in this ball game, and this has been a pretty tough game as far as the pitching and hitting goes. Now we will catch up here in the bottom of the second inning. We do have a man on second, and our catcher Andres Kairos comes into the game. He's batting pretty dang strong, 11 for 25 in the last few games. So he's right with the type of man you want to have up when you have someone in scoring position. And the first pitch to him will be a curveball down and away, but it does fall in for a strike, so now the count is 0-1. Yu checks a runner and delivers. Cairo's going to blast it down the left field. It gets past the third baseman. We're coming home with a Baker on his horse as he will cross the plate. We'll get the first run of this ball game and take the lead one to nothing, thanks to Cairo on that shot down the third baseline right past their third baseman, and that one did remain fair, luckily. And it got Baker in, who doesn't have that much speed. So getting him to come in from second on a hit, it had to be a pretty hard one. And they did have to chase it down. So now Marcus Lopez comes up to play with two outs here in the bottom of the second. One run across. And that first pitch will be a down and away cutter coming in at 92 miles an hour. But that movement made it look like it was going to be outside and it drifted right over that outer edge. Now the second pitch, that one will be dropped and gathered in by the catcher. Once again, didn't get past him, no chance of stealing, and so we take it back to first. Now, one on one delivery here to Lopez. Outside with the fastball, that'll be two and one now. His fastball and cutter have different movements, but they come in at the same speed, so that does make it pretty hard to read on those pitches. Now, you checking the runner at first, he delivers a two and one pitch, and that's a swung in on miss, change up down low. All right, I mentioned that up high fastball out of the zone, the down low off speed out of the zone. I love to swing at those. I don't know why, I never hit them. And I strike out more often than not, just like on that one as Lopez swings at that pitch just out of the zone. But I can't help but swing at them. 
and we will end up striking out that. But we do get a run across the board. Cairo does his damage as we have the lead now one to nothing here in this ball game. And so now we're going to go ahead and advance on in this game a little bit to the bottom of the fourth inning where once again we have another man on second. And this time it's our third baseman, Padilla, who's up to bat as he stands in. And that first pitch is going to be delivered to him with fastball down low and inside. Now Padilla is one of our more stronger hitters, but he does only have a 161 average with a runner in scoring position. So it is kind of a struggle for him, but the good thing is they like to pitch around him as much as they can. So odds of getting a pitch in as we get to the advantage counts comes a lot more likely. Now 2-0 delivery. Padilla, he's got a hold of that one. Deep down the left field line. And that's going to be off the foul pole. And that's a home run. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. A two-run homer hit by Padilla as he got a hold of that. And like I said, the advantage count. We got to 2-0 count. He threw a fat pitch over the middle. And Padilla made him pay for it. We took total advantage, and he blasts that one out of here as he got a good hold of it. That was his eighth home run of the season. And look at that, 358 total feet just because it bounced off the foul pole, but did come off his bat at dang near 94 miles per hour. So now coming up to the plate, who is that we got up to the plate? Cairo once again is stepping in. Trying to keep this inning alive. We get two runs across as we have a 3-0 lead here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Cairo swings. He gets a hold of one. That's a big drive to the left field. And he's going to make the catch right at the wall. What a great play by that left fielder. As he was able to get on his horse and he makes that catch right against the wall. Bringing in the third out. But once again, Padilla stepping up. Driving it home. Making things happen, giving the Horns a 3-0 lead over the Sooners as we attempt to get in this three-game sweep. Now here a little bit later in the game, we will bring in Brooks Santiago, who's a big, powerful left-hander that we have. He's been in 11 games for us, pitched for 10 innings. Um, so his ERA is a little bit off versus, you know, he's only pitched 10 innings, has not faced that many batters. Um, so you can't really take his ERA, you know, at face value. But a couple pitches in, he's got a one and one count now to his batter. He finally delivers that one. That's going to be a strike just on the outside edge. That barely hit the line needed and brings up one and two. Now Santiago's in a hurry here, and as he fires in another fastball, coming in this time at 97 on the inside, and then will be fouled off. And a one and two count now. Santiago delivers outside on the off-speed pitch. Two and two is the count, trying to maintain control of this one. Going a little bit faster than we probably should, but that's okay because they will swing and miss, and that'll be the first out here of the sixth inning. And we have maintained our 3 nothing lead. Um, look at that slider from Santiago. Nine-inch break. That means that thing is going basically from the inside of the plate to the outside. And it drops a little bit. That shows more of a drop than what you really normally see in a slider. Um, normally a slider does what it says his name is it slides it doesn't drop all that much but you normally see a little bit but that one is hellacious to try to get a hold of so no wonder they are swinging and missing so now after here at the top of the sixth inning we now have two outs and Santiago getting a little bit behind his batter two and oh is the count as he delivers that one's going to be high and outside Ooh, look like outside but they're going to give us a call two and one now as Santiago comes in once again, and that one's down at the bottom of the zone, but that one is going to be good for a strike. So two outs here, top of the six, two, two count. Santiago delivers. That one's fouled off. Good job by the Sooner batter. Um, who's that, Shins? <laughs> Shins. <laughs> good job by him to at least make some form of contact. And the next pitch is going to be fouled off once again. And Santiago's got a lot of speed coming in at 97. It's impressive these guys are able to keep up with it. And foul on off, multiple pitches. Finally, he gets Shintz to miss, and he will go sit down as that will be the third out of the sixth inning. They do claim a hit as the score is still three to nothing Longhorns. Now, we do we are out hitting the Sooners five hits to one, um, so we have been playing pretty well in that respect. And so here we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. As we look to try and extend this lead, and that's going to be big for us. Just try to make the push out to extend 
to build upon everything that we've done so far. And it looks like we're going to let that bottom one go. That barely scratches his own. I mean, my goodness. That one is just right there. But it does come in for a strike. Oh, my goodness. Gets a powerful bat on that one. Drives it to the outfield. And he's going to be rounding first into second. He's rounding second. He's going for third. As they get the ball thrown in, he's going to slide into third easily with an opening inning triple. Oh, my goodness. That was a powerful shot. As that was a perfectly timed, could not have asked for better. And that one will roll all the way to the wall. And he has trouble handling it. I've seen that animation happen. I'm not really a big fan of it. But you know what? It worked to my advantage this time. So I'm not going to complain too much. Now you, after giving up that triple to start this inning, they are going to give him the yank. And probably for the better, he's down 3 nothing. You know, we just got a triple. He's obviously not going to, you know, improve much. So they bring in Colin Hughes, who has appeared in 20 games for 23 total innings. His ERA is a 3.91. Average versus right-handers, 308. Average versus left-handers is 233. And that's kind of more rare to see for a uh, right-handed pitcher have, with right-handed batters having a higher average against them. And Harvey Hayes now is going to step up here in the bottom of the sixth inning. He's got Drew Crane over there on third. So a simple pop-up or even ground ball should be able to get Crane in. But Hayes ain't going to do nothing with swinging the bat like that. I mean, my goodness, that was nasty. And the count is one and one to Hayes. As Hughes gets set, and he's going to deliver that pitch. And that's inside, and that's going to plunk off Hayes' waist. That's starting to look a little shasty. Now we see why there's such a rivalry here between these teams. Start hitting batters. And now you start, see, you quit preaching and start admitting them. You know what I mean? So that one will lead to him being on first. So the Horns do have a man at first and third as Dante Pollard comes to the plate. And he has a pretty good average overall for the season right now. In this game, he's not doing all that great. Um, he hasn't got a hit yet, but... He's, you know, he comes through when we need him, and he's pretty decent in the right field, so it's kind of why he has a spot. As you see, he's batting 176 with a runner in scoring position. Um, but, hey, it is what it is at this point. So the one-on-one -on -one count to Pollard. He's going to hit a little dribbler, and they're not going to be able to get Hayes going to second, but they will find, throw, throw out Pollard going to first. However, that means now we got two guys in scoring position here in the bottom of the sixth inning. All right, so... Two on, one out. Greg Baker, who's already one for two, got a double earlier in this game and scored the first run. Uh, actually, I think that was the second run. No, that was the first run to come across. Yeah, that Cairo drove in. So Greg Baker steps in, one for two. Bottom of the sixth inning. That first pitch is going to be a down low fastball, but right in the zone. Perfect pitch as that one is called for a strike. So Hughes gets set and has the 0-1 delivery come in. Now it's going to be high and out, high and above the zone. And that's for a ball. So now the count is one and one to Baker. As he eyes down Hughes in the delivery. That one's, ooh, that was almost inside on that slider. That probably barely scratched the edge of the zone, just not enough for it to be called a strike. So the count is now two and one here to Baker. As Hughes delivers a two and one pitch outside, and that's going to be three and one now. And that's going to leave, you, man, you do not want Padilla coming on deck with bases loaded, I'll say that. You know, that's, that's a dangerous proposition. Now you're playing with fire. You start letting stuff like that happen. The 3-1 delivery is going to scratch the bottom of the zone. I just wanted to let that one go um, just to see. That will bring up a full count now here with one out in bottom of the sixth inning. Baker's going to foul that one off. That low, down low off-speed pitch. Come around too early on it because it looks too good. I just want to, I just want to crank it. But it's not meant to be. And here comes the payoff pitch once again inside, and that's going to force Baker over the first. So now we will have bases loaded. Luis Padilla is stepping up to the plate. Hughes is just baffled with himself, rocking what looks to be the Ricky Vaughn mullet. You know. Business up front, party in your back. That's all I'm saying. And take a little flashback to Padilla earlier in the game in the fourth inning as he cranked that two-run homer. And, and that's something you need to remind yourself of, especially when you walk the man in front of him to have one out on the inning and load the bases for him. So the plate is set. It's just whether or not he's going to be served. 
Here comes the first pitch of the at bat. He blasts a good hard shot, but that one will be gathered up by the second baseman, and they are going to turn two to end it. Hughes gets out of that one with a big time, uh, you know, big time double play to finish this inning off. I mean, he got Padilla got a hard hit, but just right at the second baseman, and so they turned it pretty smoothly, and so we will still lead three to nothing. Now here in the top of the ninth, we're going to bring in our closer, Randy Anderson. He's been in 11 games this season. He's had 10 save opportunities and has completed each of them. The score does still remain 3 to nothing. So the first pitch, he's going to get in for a strike down in the low inside zone with the off speed. So 0-1 is the count. Second pitch is going to be a fastball in the zone, and that just blew it right by the batter. Came by way too behind on it. The count is now 0-2. And that one's going to be high, but he does not hold off as he will get a strikeout on three pitches. Oh, my goodness. That one was a slider. It kind of hung up there. I guess that's why he swung a little too tasty not to swing at it. But he just could not get a hold of it as it was outside of the zone. And that'll be one out here in the top of the ninth trying to finish this game off. And that second pitch is going to be driven out to right field. It's going to get past Pollard and roll all the way to the fence. Pollard finally gets it and throws it into Sweet. He tosses it over to second, as that will be a double by Williams, his ninth double of the season, and the Sooners have got a man in scoring position. Next up is Johnny Leslie for the Sooners. He is 0 for 3 on the afternoon. The first pitch to him is going to be a fastball on the outside upper edge. He comes in for a strike, so 0 and 1 is the count. And he'll foul off the second pitch, the curveball down low and away as that now creates 0-2 to Leslie. And here comes the pay. Oh, my goodness. That one was just on the inside. Emerson is disgusted. He didn't get the call. So you know what? We're going to go right back there again. And this time he gets him swing, and Leslie could not get a hold of it. He's 0-4 for 4 on the afternoon, and that is how his day will be finished. My goodness. He gave a hell of a cut on that, but all he did was probably kill a few gnats, you know. So now two outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Damian Harris, he's 0 for 3 on the day at the strikeout in the seventh. He's going to step up to the plate to try to be some form of a savior for the Horn or for the Sooners. And that first pitch is going to be fouled off right down the line of third base all the way to the wall and almost hit his own pitchers. It's kind of ridiculous. 0-1 count for the second pitch, a curveball down and away as that one becomes 0-2 here. Harris fighting and remaining in tough for this one. 0-2 oh, delivery. Harris is going to swing, and he's going to miss that one, and that's your ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Emerson gets the save. Once again, his 11th of the season. A beautiful ninth inning for him as we will walk out of here. Winners with a clean sweep over the Oklahoma Sooners in this weekend series that we had. Man, our hitting seven hits in this one. You'd like to have more. But, hey, we will take it where we can't get it. Now, with that being said, you know, this three-game set, having a sweep, that's exactly what we needed at this stage of the season. And so we are going to continue our winning ways here. Emerson, big-time arm coming through for us at the end. And so that will set us up for the remainder, I think, you know, first third of the season, or first fifth of the season, really, since we're about 37 games through. Um... It's gone extremely well, uh, now 25-12. and 12, So it, it set us up for a pretty good run, especially coming into the middle point of the season. Now, as we do advance through, a lot of it will be simulated, but we will obviously highlight big-time games um, going forward. So remember to subscribe if you have not already. And if you did like today's video, hit that thumbs-up button as it definitely helps out the channel, and we do greatly appreciate it. So I definitely want to thank y'all for joining us in this one, and I will see y'all in the next episode as we continue our way to the College World Series. So as always, everybody, stay safe, and well, you know how it goes. Later, y'all.